Hello, math scholars. How are you? Did you have a great weekend? Did you look for shapes this weekend? Did you spy any triangles? Hexagons? I bet you spied a hexagon. Did you see a stop sign? Hmm, did you spy a rectangle? I'm looking at a rectangle right now. Not you. My computer screen. It is a rectangle. Nice job. Did you spy any circles? I did. I had dinner in a circle. Did you have dinner in a circle? Yeah, most plates are circles. Some plates are square. Did you eat on a square plate? I wish I had a square plate. That'd be cool. Okay, so today you reviewed counting by tens. Pretty awesome. We're gonna keep doing that all year. Tens and counting by fives because that, that was tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, we're gonna keep reviewing these all year long because it's hard. And the more we do it, the better we get. Same with shapes. Today, we are gonna think about a hexagon. The hexagon has how many sides? Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. It has six sides. How many corners? Wow, how'd you know that so fast? Because if it has six sides, it has six corners. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides and six corners. Today, we're gonna think about how, what, blah, 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 how many other shapes could be hiding inside the hexagon. We are going to decompose the hexagon into other shapes. All right, get your mirrors ready. We're gonna mirror words this. Remember a, a mirror, well, for those of you who are online, we haven't done mirror words yet. Mirror words is where you copy me and be my mirror. Mirror words. Oh, not everybody did it. Get your mirrors ready. You have to copy me. Mirror words. Decompose means break it down. Decompose means break it down. Did you do it? Mirrors away. So decompose means to break it down. And I'm not talking about singing. <laughs> That's cool though. I bet you could make a song about this. We're gonna decompose the hexagon into other shapes by playing a game called Fill the Hexagon. All right, so we are going to learn three different ways we can try to fill the hexagon. So I have all my other shapes here. What can I do? I could just put them on, right? I could try it. Oh, it's up when my tape comes off. Hmm. I'm gonna cover. I might have some more space. Let's try another one of these. Fill the hexagon. Oh, it doesn't look right, does it? Hmm. So. We guessed, right? Did it work? No, but guessing is a good idea. So the first thing we could do is we could guess, but after we guess, we have to check it. Guess and check. So that's one way to think about it. But if we look carefully, at how we filled in our hexagon. Does it look like it's the right way? Hmm. Huh. I see a lot of gaps. Oh, and look at these two shapes are on top of each other. Oh, and look at this. This square is coming outside of the hexagon. It's bigger than that. All right, so we need to go over some rules because we can't just plop shapes on the, on the hexagon, poor hexagon. What we need to do is put them carefully on top. Now, there are some rules about this too. When we cover our hexagon, 
we have to make sure that the shapes are not overlapping or going on top of each other. We don't want that because then we're not sure if it's a good fit or not. What we do want is for them to be touching side by side with no gaps. Look at the lines go right together. So no gaps, no overlaps. And when we're filling our hexagon, we want to stay in the hexagon lines. We don't want it to stick out over there because then it's not filled. It's not the right way. So we're going to fill it. All right. Hmm. So I put that there. Can you picture? Could you visualize anything else that might fit? I'm kind of looking at this. Visualize. Let's picture it. This looks kind of pointy, right? I bet you a triangle might fit there. So I'm looking at the rest of this and I'm seeing what else might fit. These are a little bit different size. Oh, do you visualize something right here? They could go here. Visualize, look at it and picture in your head. It looks like a trapezoid, doesn't it? Let's see. I line it up. I don't want it to overlap. I want it to go right inside. Oh, very nice job. That works. So we guessed and checked. We, when we checked it, it didn't work because we didn't follow the rules. So we guess and check. Now we can visualize. So picture what you think would work there. Visualize. So picture it. And then remember, there's no gaps, no overlaps, and inside the lines. My job. The sun is moving, it got darker in here. <laughs> All right, so we guessed and checked. That's one way to do it. We visualized it, but there's also another way. Why do you think we've been working so much on attributes? Because attributes, you can look and think of the attributes and how it could work. Hmm, attributes, I know this has Sides. So I could just start putting in, oh, I know it has six sides. So let's start putting shapes in that have the same kind of sides. Right? We're just going to layer them. Hmm. Right? The size, thinking of the attributes, how it's going to fit. Look at that attribute. Then you can visualize. So visualize has a lot to do with it. What could be the other one? Look at. This has one, two, three, four sides. Hmm, so I don't know, a square has four sides. Does that follow the rules? No. What else has four sides? Oh, a rhombus has four sides. There it is. I visualized it and I thought of the attributes. So you can guess and check visualize it or think about the attributes and remember it's important that there's no gaps no overlaps and you stay inside the lines of the shape so today you can choose any one of these to work on yours and i will show you a very cool way that you get to work on yours and we'll practice that so you can guess and check you put shapes on top and see if it works if it doesn't, you try again. Or you can visualize it. Hmm, what shape does it look like? Think about it. And then you could think about the attributes. Hmm, how many sides? What could I use? All right, so today you are going to get to play fill in the hexagon on your very own computer, right where you are. Watch what I show you. So you're gonna have to go into Schoology. This is where you were to get to me. Then this right here, here is the link to work on your pattern box. If you click on that, look where it takes you. Oh, your very own pattern box. Yes. So to fill in the hexagon, what's the first shape you're going to need? Your hexagon. So you're going to grab the hexagon. See this little finger? Click and drag. There's your hexagon. What shapes do you want to try to play fill the hexagon? 
you can grab it. Now, what if I did that? Is that right? Is that staying inside the lines? No. So you have to make sure you put it very carefully inside the lines. Okay, that fits. Now, let's do another one of those. I like that color. Could I, I could do that. What if I put it right there? Is that okay to do? No, why not? They can't overlap. They're sitting on top of each other. That's called overlapping. No overlapping. They can't touch on top of each other. So I'm going to put this right here. And I'm just guessing right now. Oh my gosh. Okay. So first, I guess I checked right now. I'm looking at it and I'm visualizing. Do you see what could fit in that yellow space? I bet you do. What is it? A triangle, absolutely. So I'm gonna go here, but look, it doesn't fit. You see this right here? This can help you turn it. So you have to turn it carefully. Oh, and then I'm gonna line it up a little more. You see how you can turn it to fit? So you're gonna have to practice that a little bit. All right, now what about this one right here? Oh, where'd it go? Ah, how do I get back? Steer it over? No. <laughs> Where's my work? All right, so if you click on it again, it messes it up. What if I move it? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Who knew? I'm gonna move these back. See, I'm still playing with it. And it's okay to make mistakes. It was hiding underneath. So don't click on the yellow hexagon, <laughs> otherwise it pops up. All right, so I'm gonna use another triangle because I visualized it. Oh, and this fits right in there. I don't have to turn it at all. If I turned it, I could see some gaps. So I line it up perfectly and I covered it. All right, we can try it again. So I used, how many shapes did you use? How many shapes did I use? Four, I used two rhombuses and two triangles. All right, so I'm gonna clear my work. Yes, clear my work. All right, I'm starting with my hexagon again. What could I use? Let's try a trapezoid. Try a trapezoid right there. Okay, that lined up. I kept inside the lines. So I guessed that one, but now I'm visualizing it. Wow. I see something. You see it too? I see another trapezoid underneath it, but wait. That's not right. I have to spin it. Whee! How many shapes did I use? Yeah, I used two trapezoids. And that is what covered my hexagon. Cover it up one more time. All right, take my hexagon. Hmm, let's try a square. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe a triangle? I'm guessing. Oh, but look at that overlaps. That can't be right. Let's move that out of the way. Um, maybe another square. Well, that overlaps too. This guessing and checking isn't working out. What about this really skinny one? That's a very skinny rhombus. But what? How would it fit? Oh, but it goes outside the shape. This is, square is really hard to work with, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. Let's see, I like the triangle. Hmm. Oh, looks like a Christmas tree. I don't think it's gonna work like that. What if I moved it like this? Oh, I see another shape. Can you visualize there? But I'm gonna try something else. To visualize that too. Mm, what else could you do? All right, so I'm gonna let you play with this. Remember, you get to it by right on your Schoology site. Here's the link right there. 
don't forget, no gaps, no overlaps, and you stay in the lines. When you're done playing with that, or whenever you feel like stopping, because it's really fun to do, and we're working on the hexagon today, because tomorrow we're gonna do something different, so. No thanks. So this exit ticket, you may still want to go up here and think about what you're doing. How many triangles would it take to fill in the hexagon? So you can have your hexagon and fill it up with triangles. How many triangles did it take? Write it in here. Okay, so you're probably gonna need both unless you have an amazing geometry brain. But I like to, I like to look and see and practice and really think about it. So and then it says, make the hexagon using trapezoids and triangles. Then write how many trapezoids and triangles it took to fill in the hexagon. So trapezoid and triangles. So I'm gonna take these off. Whoa, I did not mean to do that. So I can only use trapezoids and triangles. I don't want these squares. So you can only use trapezoids and triangles. How many? How can you make it? Make it different ways, but you need to use both of these. Use the trapezoids and the triangles. And once you cover it up, how many trapezoids did you use? How many triangles did you use? After you write the numbers in there, you turn it in. Right? You're gonna do the work in here to get your answer. And then you are going to write in the number right here. Once you do it, and then turn it in. Sounds great. Tomorrow, we're gonna be working on something else besides the trapezoids, but you're gonna to get to play games and put the blocks in, all right? So stick to the hexagons today. It's tomorrow, you get to play with something different. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.